I'm going to follow up and say a little bit more about the things that Julia was talking about. I'll start with my friend Effie, who is Nigerian, and I was talking to Effie quite recently. And Effie said, you know, when people from Europe or the United States come to Nigeria and they start wanting to talk about corruption, I said, I have a simple answer to them. I say, why do you think so many Nigerians are corrupt? It's not because Nigerians are intrinsically corrupt, it's because you people make it possible for them to be corrupt and indeed encourage them to be corrupt. Because you make it possible for international banks and pre you don't prevent international banks from spiriting the money away from Nigeria to somewhere else. And you make it possible for that money to be hidden somewhere else in the world. So FA says, you know, you do something about that, then we can talk. And he's absolutely right. I mean, the large amount of corrupt money that Julia talked about in Russia is, it's a very big, Russia is exceptional, but it is a global problem. And the global problem is that uh, there are really two key mechanisms here. One is international banks that do not do their due diligence and endlessly and continuously fail to follow the rules they have themselves and allow obviously corrupt and suspect money to go around the world. And the other one is that there are so many ways in which governments uh, internationally allow people to keep assets in secrecy, mainly in shell companies and in trusts. So there are two key mechanisms here. We know what they are. They are very difficult to um, stop entirely, but it is not actually rocket science to do quite a lot about them. And there is, in fact, from this crisis, potentially a significant silver line because the awareness of these issues that Julia was talking about has been with us for quite some years now. It's been getting bigger and bigger. Um, the awareness comes from many sources, including sort of people like us, like academics, researchers, campaign journalists, civil society organizations. But also, and very importantly, it comes from people who are professionally concerned with national security and military issues because they see the extent to which this illicit money is being used by uh, criminal gangs, by drug gangs, by terrorists and others, and is not only um, causing all kinds of problems overseas, but it is corrupting politics in countries like Britain. And I say that quite deliberately. Our, the politics of Britain have been seriously corrupted by all that money that is flowing through London. So the silver lining here is that um, there has been a real push now to do something about this. This is on the international agenda. The Financial Action Task Force, which is a um, intergovernmental organization, ratcheted up its efforts uh, within a week, in fact, of the, of the invasion of the Ukraine. Um, much more is to be done, and it would be terrific if more could be done on this. Much more to say on that, but I think that is enough on this issue for now. And uh, next speaker 